it's peace. It's just this one situation which you're just, you know, you can just look at it and feel it like a sculpture. It is a comment on on feminism and objectification. I mean, this is a, this is like an old, the mocha is where it used to be a car dealership where, where like shiny cars were for, for sale. And now it's just like, it's like a showroom with ladies, you know, on a pedestal playing these melancholic chords. So Woman in E, this new piece, it's made for this space, you know, it's like, it's created especially for Mokat. And there was just something about like, when I was in the space and I heard that it was like a, you know, a, a showroom for cars or something. I, yeah, and then that this idea just suddenly came into my head, this like rotating pedestal, like in a showroom. And like, just to have this glittery circle and in it circling a, a woman in a golden gown. And then the music is basically these beautiful, this beautiful melancholic chord, E minor. And then it plays off a little bit from E minor and goes a bit into A minor and then into E minor again. You know, it's just a kind of nice contrast of, of these minor chords and then the glitzy atmosphere. And then of course, the performers, which are these uh, super cool Detroit ladies. They will perform throughout the entire day when the museum is open and throughout the entire show. They're kind of like the, the statues of liberty or something. It feels great to be in Detroit with this piece and with my, you know, with my stuff <laughs> in my, my worldview because it, it sort of, you know, it feels very much at home in the Detroit scene. I knew about Detroit ma mainly from the musical history. Music and cars, what I knew, and then Mike Kelly, of course. Raised in the theater and always in bands and and I think I went into art school because you know like it's like art school is the best rock school you know but then I just realized that visual art is like the greatest form because it has this total freedom. I work a lot with uh, the language of theater and show business because I just really love that but what I don't really like about the theater and show business is the narrative because at the end of the day I'm a I'm a visual artist and I just like painting and sculpture. So I kind of turn the theatrical into something sculptural, you could say. For the audience, it's a very free invitation to look at it as long as you want. You can go and sit there for, for, for hours or you can just take a glance of it at it for one minute. It sort of gives you the same kick. We've been talking a lot about how violent it is to objectify a woman in art that comes into this piece. I was in art school, I just, there was a class on feminist art and I just like had a, had a like, you know, eureka moment, like this is it, this is the most exciting stuff. Yeah, I think feminist art is gonna be the most important stuff of the late 20th century in the future. I'm just fascinated by American culture because it just blends everything together and it shapes the world you know we live in now and it's also so banal in so many ways there's always something wrong in America and I think that kind of enchants me a bit I think it's something most people are fascinated by in Europe and especially in Iceland because Iceland is uh, it was like the poorest country in Europe and then there came like the second world war and the American occupation and like like everything became Americanized. It, and it just changed from this society where people lived in mud huts and had nothing into like, suddenly people had, you know, had Cadillacs. <laughs> like it's just in, it just in a period of, of uh, 10, 20 years. It was just crazy. But mostly I think my fascination for, for America comes from that, like I was raised in a socialist anti-American home. You know, we would go on marches against the American military base, like sing songs against the imperial capitalist America. And you know, like, we, like my parents didn't listen to American music or you know, never, never wanted me to see American movies or something. So I think it's also that it was like, um, for, for, yeah, for, my, for that little socialist kid, it was kind of uh, off limits. I think that also made the back big fascination for me. Living in a, an isolated place that 
at kind of the end of the world, which Iceland is, it, I think it has a huge influence on me. It's pretty great. Iceland is 300,000. Yeah, it's just a tiny spot. I'm addicted with living there. I, 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 I haven't moved away. It's a place out of the world in, in some sense. I get into the art world when I come to America or Europe and then I just go back home and that's so far away from the art world or, or the real world. It's a bit of a cave, but you know, people, are, people know about what's happening in the world, but it's far away from it. In my lifetime, it has kind of grown out of like, I remember like seeing a foreigner. It was like exciting. It's like, it's a foreigner. You know, like the kids would run and see the foreigner. <laughs> but now it's like, like a lot of people come to visit. I don't know if the, if the dark humor and melancholia kind of has something to do with Iceland. I don't know, I think it's, I think it's pretty universal, the, the melancholia, you know. Iceland is a pretty, I mean, it's dramatic nature, but it's not a dramatic place at all. I mean, compared to like Detroit or something, where there's like, here is so much drama. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> so much drama, that was a good cue. <laughs>